Welcome back to the Bismarck Community Bowl Class 3 football. We're getting ready for ta or take off, kickoff here. Bismarck High is going to be kicking off to Mandan. They're going to be moving right to left tonight and right into the wind in this first quarter kickoff by Tyler Claremont. And it's fielded. They're going to hand it off from Nate Schmidt. This one goes to Brady Brady Zittleman, he's going to be taken down <laughs> you at this. about the 25-yard line. So yeah. that's where Mandan will start. You thought the same thing I thought. I saw somebody lost a, a lid there, and I thought yeah. it was the football popping out. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for Mandan on offense. Right tackle is Logan McDowell. The right guard is number 62, Alex Spillman. The center is number 58, Derek Markle. At left guard, number 61, Tyler Jans. He's a junior. The tackle is number 77, Jake Hansen. David White, he's 6'2". Uh, uh, he's number 94, playing tight end. At receiver, number 6, Nate Schmidt. Here's a look at your Keller Hearth and Home Bismarck starting defense. Nose guard Drew Carey, right tackle Tyler Bauer, left tackle number 40 Tom Cease, and linebacker Justin Thorson, number 84. Another linebacker Riley Plant, number 45 Brennan Fetchin at linebacker, and so is Bronte Liggins, number 32. Here's a look at the Bismarck High secondary, number 33 Josh Seibel, another corner, number 10 Brandon Schmidt. At strong safety, Lee Brown Engel, number 23, and Nukule, number 4, plays free safety. Bismarck or Mandan with the ball second down, 10 to go here for Mandan. They're going to hand this one off. Just a couple of yards here. Looks like they're going to have third down and about six here to go. Number 44, Riley Plant, one of those players you mentioned ahead, just came up and absolutely filled that hole. And uh, just a nice, solid tackle. And that's one thing you notice about these demons is they do just about everything by the book, just so technically sound. Big third down here for Manan as we get this opening possession underway. Just over a minute into this first quarter, Ross efforts back at quarterback. He's going to take it from the shotgun. He's going to drop back. Looking for a receiver. He's going to have to run it. Looks like he's going to get close to a first down. I think he'll be a couple uh, yards short. And I think it'll be a punt situation here for Mandan. Bismarck High should have their first of the day. Well, and that's what Mark Gibson wanted. Give Mandan uh, the ball right away. The wind is in their face. Uh, tough to throw the ball and uh, tough to kick the ball against that strong wind that's coming out of the northwest. So the Demons should end up with excellent field position here. As you can see, Brett Adam standing on uh, his own 45-yard line. Short punt there. Adam's just going to let this one roll back. Cam Christofferson will down this one at about the 32-yard line. That's 31-yard line. That's where Bismarck High will take over on their first possession, the 31 of their own. Let's look now at the starting lineup for the Bismarck High offense, sponsored by Killer Hearth and Home Right Tackle, number 71, Zach Scalzo, right guard. Number 72, Jaden Freed at center. 55, Jordan Rao, left guard. 57, Jamie Thorson. And 52, Dylan Schneibel in at left tackle. Tight end, number 84, Justin Thorson. At receiver, Nick Cotry wearing number 7. Brett Adam wearing number 6. Fullback, Riley Plant. He's number 44, starting tailback. Lane Joes wearing number 3. And the starting signal caller, Ben Jolliffe, at quarterback. He wears number 16. Justin Thorson on that reception, uh, he just kind of shifted out into the flat on the far side of the field and uh, a big gain right at midfield for the Demons, so a nice start for them on their first play from scrimmage. The Mandan defense, sponsored by Keller Hearth and Home, the nose guards number 53, Trex Op, right tackles number 95, Dustin Hermanson, left tackles number 62, Alex Spillman. We'll take a look at this play. Plant on the carry off the left side. At linebacker, number 48, Dan Langowski. The linebacker, number 94, is David White. Number 42, Brady Skitland, also a linebacker, as is number 43, Tyler Sadowski at 5'8". At cornerback, number 16, Ross Efforts. The starting quarterback, Brady Zittleman, wears number 7 for the Braves. Nate Schmidt at strong safety wears the 6. And at free safety, number 25, Dan Peterson. We've got Ben Jolliffe. He's going to hand this on. Off to Lane Joes, and he is out, and he's got a little bit of room to go. He gets about 20 yards on that carry. He gets down to the 25-yard line. First and 10 for the Bismarck Demons from the 25-yard line, and they're getting this ball moving in about their fifth play of the game here. You know what was impressive, as you mentioned, Joes is over 1,000 yards through six games, which sounds uh, great, but then when you realize he's playing about half of each game because of uh, the lopsided victory is even more impressive 
for the BHS senior. Absolutely. He hasn't played in the second half the last two games against both Jamestown and Dickinson. Handoff again to Joes. He's going to get stopped in the back backfield. A big defensive play by number 95, Dustin Hermanson of the Mandan Braves. That's going to set the Bismarck High Demons back about four yards on that one. Well, that's not something you see with that offensive line that lost two starters to suspension for the full season. But a leak right there that allowed Hermanson to come in and just make a great tackle, uh, like you said, to knock the Demons back for four yards. Bismarck High's got second and 13 right now. They're going to hand off again to Joes. He's got room. He plows ahead, gets tripped up there, but I think he gets about five or six on that one. That should bring up third down. Eight and a half minutes here to play in the opening quarter. Bismarck High on their first drive of the day. That'll make it third and nine. The last two plays, they've split two receivers off to the left side, which is kind of interesting, kind of maybe opening up the field for Joes. This man down defense talking to Todd Sheldon too. Undersized really, but really feisty, he said. Yeah, definitely undersized when you consider your best defensive player only five foot eight inches tall, but both teams a little nervous about Tyler Sadowski. This time, Jolliffe back to throw, and it looks like they're gonna call this one a catch by Brett, or excuse me, that's number four, Nick Goulet. So he's gonna be down at about the 17 yard line. Bismarck High, that'll bring up, I think about a fourth and Fourth and four, maybe? They're calling oh, it a first, first down. That was close there. Not a formation you see very often in uh, Mark Gibson's offense. Four receivers. Lane Joe stayed back to block, and uh, but a lot of time uh, to get that ball in there. This time they've got three in the backfield. They're definitely mixing things up here early. The handoff to Joe's. He's going to plow ahead. Touchdown, Bismarck High. He gets in. Seven and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Bismarck High gets on the board first. Lane Joes with a 10-yard touchdown. That's his 16th touchdown of the season. Bismarck High rolling early. Yeah, just a huge hole, a little cut back by Joes. Basically almost untouched into the end zone. So the Demons jump out here to a 6-0 lead with 7.32 left in the first quarter as they set up for the extra point. Josh Seibel's extra point is good and it is seven to nothing. Bismarck High again, seven and a half minutes to play. Well, let's take a look at this play again and show you what uh, Mark Gibson has been so happy with the play of this offensive line. And I think you'll get a good indication here as to why. Looking at the push there and Jost, like I said, virtually untouched on that 15-yard scamper into the end zone, his 16th touchdown on the year. And uh, not surprisingly, when we talked to Mark Gibson earlier this week, he wanted to get off to a fast start, I think, and uh, quell any sort of an idea that Mandan may have uh, that they could uh, stay in this game. So now it'll be interesting to see how the Braves respond. Like you and I talked earlier this week to Lane Joes, and I think what he would say on that play, definitely his offensive line opened up that hole. He's very humble about the fact that, yeah, he may have 1,000 yards, he may have 15 touchdowns, but he definitely doesn't do it alone. No, when you have that kind of a hole, yeah. uh, you know, you got to tip your hat to that offensive line, which is really, you know, Mark Gibson said they, he sees them hanging out together, and he says they've really uh, become uh, a unit, which, uh, of course, makes a big difference in the running game. Nate Schmidt pulling this kickoff back. He's going to be out to about the 30-yard line. That's where Mandan will take over with their second possession of the game. Hopefully this time they can get the ball moving a little bit more down the field. Todd Sheldon <coughs> talking about the Demons special team, and he said they've watched them tape and seen 10 of the 11 guys reach the 20-yard line at the same time. So the tenaciousness of this Demon uh, defense and special teams uh, units is uh, really unparalleled. Ross efforts back. He takes a direct snap and he goes through. He's still on his feet pushing forward. That defense pushing him back though. He gets about, looks like three yards on that carry. That should bring up second down and 10 or that seven, excuse That was me. actually Tyler Sadowski, like in a wildcat formation, taking the direct snap, no quarterback on the field. And he's gonna be the signal caller the way it looks right now. I do not see efforts on the field, but uh, number 43. You're right about that. The linebacker <laughs> lining up in essentially a shotgun formation. 
obviously trying to throw off this Bismarck High defense. Everybody knows that they are tough. They really get to the ball. He's going to bowl through for a couple more. Sadowski again on the carry. He gets this one up to about the 35-yard line. Well, he's got a reputation, obviously. Lane Jones even called him out by name. I think uh, growing up through the years, uh, he's put a helmet on uh, on Joe's a time or two, but a lot of respect for him, his efforts now it does come back into the game, but I think you're right, Todd Sheldon, Mandan's coach, probably trying to catch the demons off balance a little bit. Yeah, do a little, few looks that they maybe haven't seen before. So efforts back in the shotgun here. He's going to hand this one off, run it himself. He gets out, looking to throw. No go on this one. Bismarck High's defense seals it there. Lee Brown angle on the coverage for Mandan. That'll bring up a fourth down and about seven to go. You assume Mandan is going to kick this one back to Bismarck High. Brett Adam dropping back in or dropping back to receive here. He's got his toes at this point on the 45. Yeah, just about the exact same time as last time. Uh, looks like back to back three and outs. Brett Adam lined up on the 45. This time he's on the 40. And uh, Mandan just not able to get anything going on offense. This punt is blocked. I think that was number 98, Stanley Jones. Ricardo, Ricardo Galindo Ricardo was actually Galindo, the one in there 24. that got uh, a hand on the ball. And then it was uh, Tyler there. Claremont that came up, uh, jumped up and grabbed it out of the air, I believe, number 89. So Bismarck High will take take over right now 555 here to go let's look at the replay of that blocked punt yeah same formation as the first time the punter running to the right and uh, well let's let this play go here as the demons uh, have the ball in great field position inside the Braves 40 yard line with 554 to go in the first quarter handoff to Joe's taken down at about the 47 yard line that'll bring up second down Excuse me, 37-yard line. Number 42, Brady Skitland wrapping up Joe's there after the short gain. 5.35 to go. The Demons scored on their first possession, a 15-yard touchdown by Joe's, and trying to march in to, for another one here. So we're just underway at the Community Bowl. You might notice that Bismarck High has those pink socks on today, all the coaches wearing pink as well. Jolliffe drops back, looking to pass. He's Got nobody there, a couple of guys downfield, but not eligible receivers. There is a flag on the play here. Number 95, Logan Clenzie, 5'10", 155 pound sophomore in the backfield. If that sounds right, that guy looks a little bigger out there on the field, doesn't he? I think I'm looking uh, at Dustin Hermanson instead. <laughs> got into the backfield there. Yeah, he's quite a bit bigger, 6'3". <laughs> We'll see what the call is here on the field. Yeah. Took a little while for that play to develop and somebody got a little far downfield. Yeah, I think that was, uh, if I remember right, Dylan Schneibel and also number 57, Jamie Thorson. That'll bring up about a second down and 13 from the 39 yard line of the Braves. Just one in the backfield, Riley Plant. They've got trips out to the right. And that one batted down by number 94, David White. Ms. Mark High back to the 52 as Brett Adam has to come in and cover that one up. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see that again. They're actually saying that was uh, not a forward pass, a forward and that pass. was a live ball. And now the Demons face a very, very long third down. But what's interesting is the formations that Mark Gibson is throwing out on the field offensively. What impressed me about the game against Century is they just basically marched it downfield and didn't really right. get very fancy. Here tonight we're seeing three and four receiver sets. Third and 24 for the Demons at 49, their own 49 yard line. Ben Jolliffe back, he's looking to pass again, rolling out to his left. He's going to run this one. Not a lot there. He gets it out to about the 45-yard line of Mandan, but on fourth down, or that'll bring up fourth down, so nothing there. Bismarck High will have to punt this one back to Mandan as they bring out their kicker, Hayden Gibson, number eight. Dustin Hermanson, number 95, having a really active night. He got back there again, fell down, got up, and got in on the tackle. We'll see if the Demons 
really do choose to kick here. 354 to go in the first quarter. Good kick there by Gibson. He booms that one back to about the 11-yard line. Nate Schmidt taking this one out for Mandan, trying to find an edge there, doesn't get it. I think that was number 33, Josh Seibel, in there on the coverage, bringing down Nate Schmidt. Well, again, we talked about the team speed, and Mark Gibson did as well of this uh, Demon team. Uh, you asked him the question. He said he thought this was probably the best defensive team he's had in his 14 years as head coach at Bismarck High. He didn't want to put the, the offense up quite that high. Of course, uh, a few years back, they yep. had a pretty potent offense with Esley Thornton as quarterback, but uh, you just really see how well they get down on field, uh, down the field on kickoff and punt situations. Yeah, if people remember that 2009 team with Esley Thornton, Jake Miller, Nick Jolliffe, Ben Jolliffe's brother, at wide receiver. That was a very high-octane offense. And we have another change in the backfield here. Definitely trying to mix things up is Mandan. This one breaking through for a few yards. Number seven, Brady Zittleman. That's their backup quarterback in. So well, I don't know, you know, if they're just trying to mix it up, maybe Ross Effort doesn't feel in the great, so great. We don't know for sure, because earlier in the week, we were told that Ross Efforts was questionable for this game. So. I, I went down on the field beforehand, as you did, and I was watching Ross, and he really put some zip on that football, and he looked fine. But uh, who's to say one thing that could be for certain, Mandan trying to get a little creative to throw the Demons off their game a little bit. A six yard yep. gain, second and four with just under three minutes to go here in the first quarter. Zittleman back in there. He's gonna run this ball. Looks like they're gonna be a little bit short there. Looks like they maybe gained one, maybe two on that play, not a lot. That was Nathan Schmidt and they talked about him playing two ways and also having some great speed that they're just not able to turn an edge yet on this uh, demon defense. And a third and five. Here Let's comes see. Tyler Sadowski back in. <laughs> back in. Okay. Definitely so some <laughs> interesting looks coming in here from Mandan. I've seen him play several times this year, and I can say that I haven't seen very many of these formations. Well, it's essentially like the Wildcat, right? It's a yes. direct snap to uh, an unexpected signal caller, I guess you could say. And Mandan, uh, I think, taking a time out there is the clock was winding down with 209 here to go in the first quarter and the demons up seven to nothing not a lot of action so far when you say tom it's been pretty quiet both <laughs> both teams you know bismarck highs had two possessions first possession they came down and scored second possession you know definitely not their look they also like we said trying to throw in a few looks that maybe mandan hasn't seen typically we don't see them with more than two receivers out on the field at once but they had trips out to the right and left multiple times, so definitely trying to throw something in there. And that four receiver set on the long third down, but uh, maybe something for uh, future defenses to see on film too, perhaps down the road, some different looks from Bismarck High. Yeah, it's hard to believe this is already week seven of the football season. Tonight, they've got a game. Bismarck High has a game next Thursday and the following Thursday. They have no Friday night games left on their schedule, so the season's really starting to wind down. Bismarck High is 3-0 and oh in the West Region at this point. Mandan is 1-2 and two in the West Region right now. Mandan is outside of playoff contention. A win tonight, obviously, would go a long ways. Well, then they've got to come back across the river next week and play Century yeah. on this very same Definitely field. Definitely their toughest three weeks. Last week they had River Red River. This week they've got Bismarck. Next week, Century. Definitely a tough schedule here in the middle. Efforts back under center, and the give is to Sadowski off to the left, but that's going to be short of the first down as we hit that two-minute mark in the first quarter. Something we haven't mentioned, Mandown's missing their starting tailback, Matt Zeman, the six-foot three, 210-pound tailback is out this week, separated shoulder. We found that out on Monday when we were over there talking, and I think that was definitely a big setback for them, something they definitely didn't want to see go down. He has most touches for Mandan this season. Well, and you mentioned he's just such a good all-around athlete for Mandan. Definitely a guy you want on the field in a game like this. Short punt here for Mandan. That one will go out to about the 40, 42-yard line. 
And with 122 left in the opening quarter, Bismarck High will have possession again. And this is their third possession with very short field. So we'll see if they can finally get something done here. They lead seven to nothing, 122 left in the opening quarter. Yeah, it's not something we've seen Bismarck High do a lot this year, punt. So, no. Uh, but in a game of field position, Bismarck High has dominated this one, starting this possession inside Braves territory. I actually had to look up who their punter was because <laughs> I wasn't totally sure. And Ben Jolliffe, he's going to bowl this one ahead to about the 36-yard line. That'll bring up second down. Probably about three. <laughs> Oh, they backed it up a little bit, but a nice gain on that first down is Jolliff keeping that one all the way. I feel like Lane Jose hasn't touched the ball in a while. Yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't. I think he's got four carries maybe tonight. And the ball does go to Joe's. He goes up the middle. He goes in first down. Bismarck High finally gets ahead. They have it about the 22-yard line. 44 seconds to play in the first quarter. And they've got first and 10 from the 22. You just had that feeling, didn't you? Yeah. Perhaps uh, number three would uh, get the pigskin on that carry. And then it's almost like he spends the summer practicing running into brick walls or something. <laughs> uh, he hit a man down defender hard and carried him another few yards. Yeah, he is a big running back, 210 pounds, 5 foot 11. He's not your average small little tailback. Again, Joe's going up. He's going to take this one out to about the 16-yard line, I think. That'll bring up third down. Another good gain for the Demons as uh, the f they're going to actually measure this one, I think, or they've blown the whistle for some reason. No, I think uh, timeout's been called. Bismarck wanting maybe to keep the ball with the wind before the first quarter ends, 17 seconds well, to go. I think somebody must be injured. I see the trainer running across the field. They must be needing to look at somebody for Mandan. All right, very good. Yeah, that's uh, Sadowski, if I'm not mistaken. That would be... Big loss a there. Big loss. Joe's on the carry. He goes up, not quite in for a Lane touchdown, Joe but he does bring it down to the three. Welcome back to the Bismarck Community Bowl. You're watching Class 3A football here on KX. We're just about to start the second quarter. It is seven to nothing, Bismarck High, and they are knocking on the door again. They've got the ball on the three-yard line as their offense comes back out. 7-0, Bismarck High, and like I said, they've got the opportunity here to punch in some more points. Number 43 for Mandan, Tyler Sadowski, uh, was being worked on during the break there, but uh, whatever they did, he's back on the field. He's actually taken some snaps <laughs> tonight in a wildcat formation and, of course, the best linebacker and defender the Braves have. Three in the backfield here for Bismarck High. They're going to give it to Lane Joes, and it looks like he's going to be able to be just short of a touchdown. He gets pushed back right at the goal line. They should have... Second down and about one to a half a yard here. Joe's never went down really, and when he did, finally he was in the end zone, but the whistle had been blowing a little bit ahead of that. A, a nice job by the Mandan defense on the goal line stand there, but uh, second down now and about a half foot for the Demons. Another full backfield here. They've got Tom Cease, Riley Plant, and Lane Joes again. The ball to Joes, and this time he is in for the touchdown. Six more points for Bismarck High. 11-17 left in the first, and they go on to take the lead 13-0. to zero. Well, after uh, sputtering on offense in their second possession and punting the Demons' answer on their third possession with uh, Lane Joes' second touchdown of the night and 17th of the season. Josh Seibel's kick is good, and it, or no good, excuse me. It stays 13 to nothing. And, and Mandan will get the ball back here with 11-17 left in the second quarter. Let's take another look at that, and you can see the job uh, again by the offensive line, and you can see Jose uh, getting small. I pounding his way in there. But look at that push by that big demon offensive line. Uh, no doubt about that touchdown. And Riley Plant, number 44, there getting a handshake 
from his tailback. So now the Demons will work with the wind at their back. We'll see if that makes a difference as uh, to uh, who plays quarterback. We've had three different uh, guys back there taking snaps just yeah. in the first quarter so far tonight. Todd Sheldon, the didn't, he didn't mention that to us earlier this week that he was planning on mixing things up so much. Maybe you know, he didn't want to give away too much to us as well. Not a huge crowd here tonight down at the Community Bowl. Both sides have some fans, but it's definitely very chilly. It was 40 degrees at kickoff and quite a bit of wind. It was 32 with the wind chill. Mandan's going to have the ball to start here in the second quarter at the, excuse me, I think that's the 27-yard line. Tyler Sadowski coming up with that squib kick. I guess uh, really not wanting to get the ball into the air there and maybe hoping to catch the Braves off guard a little bit. But uh, Sadowski quick to pounce on that one and fall forward for a couple of yards. Let's see here who is under center. It looks like Efforts. Efforts is back, number 16 for the Braves. They've got one split out to both sides. They're going to give that to number 24, David Payne. He's in at tailback today for number 45, Matt Zeman, who's out with a separated shoulder. And uh, David Payne has under 100 yards rushing, so he doesn't typically see a ton of rushing here for Mandan. Now, uh, just paying attention there, number 16, Ross Efforts, just jogged off the field. So we'll see what kind of formation the Braves come up with this time, because as we also see, uh, Sadowski is off the field. And uh, we've seen... Looks like Zittleman is Zittleman back. now in the, quarter, in the quarterback slot. <laughs> Zittleman back in the shotgun. He's got trips out to his oh left, boy. and he is taken down in the backfield by Ricky Galindo, number 24. He rushes back there, and Zittleman had nowhere to go but right into Ricky Galindo's arms. Five demons in the backfield on that play. It's not like one just, uh, that was a jailbreak. There is uh, Galindo leading the way, and never a chance for that play to get anywhere now. A long 13 yards on this third down for the Braves as it looks like Brady Zittleman will remain under center. No one in the backfield right now with Zittleman. He's got two out to his right. He flushes out of the pocket, looking for some room to run. He's gonna get about four on that play. That'll bring up fourth and six from the 30-yard line, and Mandan will punt this one away on their fourth position of the night. Number 45, Brennan Fetch uh, on the tackle. There's a flag on the far side of the field at about the 38-yard line. You've got better eyes than I do. I didn't see that one. I just picked, just picked up the laundry. Oof. Definitely Mick, Mark Gibson is not going to be happy with that one. Uh, that one continues the drive for Mannion. A 15-yard personal foul. The first flag, I do believe, of the night, right? I believe that's First flag of the night I and a big one, right, 15 yards. So Mandan will start and continue their drive from the 45-yard line. And the last thing you want to do is give uh, the Braves any energy or uh, some decent field position. And after the play, uh, just a, a tough mistake by the Demons. Zittleman will run this one ahead. He gets this one out to about the 54-yard line, and we've got another flag coming in late. Some pile jumping there, I think. Yep. I don't know if this will be another personal foul. We'll have to wait and see. They are holding this one pretty close here on this drive. Oof. Another 15 yards against Bismarck High. So two flags for 30 yards, play after play. And we know that Mark Gibson likes this defense, but at the end of the day, if they're not disciplined, he is going to be a very unhappy man. And we know Dale Colby, that, uh, who's, the, <laughs> who's the defensive coordinator over there, he's probably just as hot under the collar. That pink shirt might turn red here pretty quickly. Those are the two biggest plays for the Mandan offense tonight, courtesy of the Bismarck defense. And now suddenly the Braves are on the Demons 33 yard line with 8.53 to go here in the second quarter, trailing 13 to nothing. That quarterback 
the handoff here, number 24, David Payne. Ross Efforts back in there for Manon, jogging to the sideline. We'll see, looks like Efforts is gonna come back out. Zittleman back in. This is something you haven't seen much of the games that I've seen Mandan play. Ross Efforts has taken almost all of the snaps.